short, and then it has three branches. Over here on the far right, we have the right subclavian, which is gonna to go to the right arm. And then the other two are the carotid arteries, the left one here and the right carotid here. And you'll see that they're gonna run up on either side of the trachea, and that's gonna deliver blood to the head. Now between the two carotids, we see the trachea. You can easily see the rings of cartilage. If we continue on up towards the head, eventually it turns into this white box, which is the larynx. And then you can see kind of peeking out behind the trachea here, we see this tube, which is the esophagus. Normally it's behind the trachea and it's gonna descend down and eventually become the stomach once we get through the diaphragm, mm -hmm. all right? If we come down into the abdominal cavity, over here on the right side, we see all of this is the liver broken into several lobes. Right in here, tucked away in between these lobes, you can see this sac. You can see it kind of, if I poke on it, that's the gallbladder. And then over here on the left side of the abdomen, we see the stomach. And then hanging down the left side, we see the spleen. All right, if we lay open the stomach, we can divide the stomach into its region. So right up here, we see the esophagus coming in. Where the esophagus connects to the stomach, that would be the cardia. And then up here, lateral to that would be the fundus of the stomach. So esophagus, cardia, and fundus. Now the main part here would be the body of the stomach. And then where it curves and narrows, this would be the pylorus. Now the end of the stomach, you're looking for the pyloric sphincter. And usually it's gonna be a little pinched region with the band of fat on it. So that right there is the pyloric sphincter, which indicates the end of the stomach from the pylorus here into the small intestine, which would be the duodenum. If I raise the stomach and we look under it, we're gonna see the pancreas. Now the pancreas on this one starts way over here. It's this thin piece that you see right here it extends all the way across under the stomach and then you will see it run right next to the duodenum see it's connected right next door so here's the duodenum and here's the pancreas all right so if you see a piece of small intestine and you see it connecting to the stomach then we know it's going to be the duodenum now we come down here and kind of work backwards. Here is the large intestine, and I see it descending down to where the rectum would be. If I follow it backwards, I can find where the duodenum, I'm sorry, the large intestine begins, which would be right here. So you can see it kind of loop around where it should be in the abdomen. So over here, we can see the small intestine, which I'm holding here, connect to the large right here. And so where they join between the tweezers here, that's where the ileocecal valve would be found, separating the ileum from the first part of the large intestine, the cecum. Now from the cecum, we're gonna go up toward the head. So that would be the ascending colon as we move across, this would be the transverse. And as we go down towards the rectum on the left side, this would be the descending colon. So over here we have cecum, ascending, transverse, and descending colon or large intestine. And again, if you see the small intestine connecting to the large intestine, then that would be the end of the small intestine and that would be the ileum. So when you're dealing with small intestine, you wanna look at what 
structure does it connect to? So if it connects to the large intestine, it's ileum. If it connects to the stomach, like we saw up here, if we see the small intestine connect to the stomach, then that would be the duodenum. All right, if we come back here and we look at the kidney, so here we see a kidney. We see that covering that we talked about. Oh, actually, we're gonna talk about it next week. Uh, we see that covering that I'm pulling off of it. And this is what's anchoring it to the posterior wall of the abdomen. Now, on the medial side of the kidney right here, we see this is where the blood vessels connect to the kidney. So if we look over here in the middle, we see this big vein. This is the inferior vena cava going down through the abdomen and just to the left of it, we see the aorta. And if I come up here, I'm gonna see a big vein from the vena cava, go from the vena cava over to the kidney. And that's what would be called the renal vein. And then behind it, we see this artery which is going from the aorta over to the kidney. That's the renal artery. And both of those are connecting to this medial side of the kidney, which is known as the hilum. Another thing connecting to the hilum would be this tube right here. This is the ureter, which is gonna to connect to the kidney and it's gonna drain urine from the kidney down to the bladder. So this big sac that we see right here, this is the bladder, and you can follow those, the ureter all the way down to the point that it connects right there to the bladder itself. And there would be a ureter on both sides. This is the left one, there would be one on the right side from the right kidney. And if we look right here, if we come back to the aorta, down here in the abdomen. What you're gonna notice is it comes down here and it branches. The first branch on each side is the external iliac artery. And if we follow the external iliac, notice what it does. It goes over through the inguinal region and into the leg. And once it enters the leg right here, its name changes and becomes the femoral artery as it's associated with the femur. So this is a large artery that provides most of the blood to the leg. Right next to it, you're gonna see the femoral vein, which is gonna be draining blood from the leg back up toward the heart. So that was the first branch off of the aorta, the external iliac. Now, you'll notice it comes down and it branches again to the left and the right. This is the internal iliac artery, and this is gonna supply blood primarily to the pelvic organs. So the aorta here branches into the external iliac and then the internal iliac. And then here we have a male cat. So what we're looking for internally in the male cat is at the base of the bladder. Here we see the ureter again, but we see this additional tube that loops around the base of the bladder on the left side and on the right. So those tubes are the vas deferens. And what they do is they carry um, sperm from the testes. So the testes are out here in the scrotum. So there's a tube called the vas deferens that leads from each testy. It comes back in the body. It loops around the bladder and then connects to the urethra at the bottom of the bladder. I think that's it.